Hello everyone, it's Miss Withers here and we are on to our next video lesson. Now I know a few of you were a bit shocked last week when I gave you a project lesson instead of a video lesson and I had a few emails to say people preferred the video lessons. So I wanted to switch it up but it seems like the overall message is that you prefer these ones so we'll keep going with these ones. Um, just wanted to say I hope everyone is keeping safe and keeping well. I hope we all had a lovely half term and we managed to relax a little bit away from schoolwork and managed to get out in the sunshine as well. Um, but today we are back to work, our second week back to school after half term and we are moving on to a new topic. So we finished our topic on India, um, wrapping it up with the fair trade product uh, project and the bigger quiz. Um, so I've got all the scores in for that and a lot of people are doing some really, really good work and getting some really high scores in those quizzes, which is really good to see and um, that you're still dedicated to your schoolwork um, while you're at home and it's really, really good. Um, I've got a record of all of those as well, so all, I'm keeping scores and keeping track of who's doing their work, who's doing um, the quizzes and um, your score that you're getting on those as well. So it's lovely to see how people are progressing over time and if your scores are getting better and things like that. So if anyone wants to know um, about how they're doing or overall how they're getting on, please let me know and I can email you. Um, but I have sent some emails home to parents and those for, the, for people who are doing particularly well. OK, right. Moving on. So we're looking at um, the water cycle today. So our new topic is rivers and we're going to be looking at rivers in the UK and um, looking at different stages of rivers and kind of um, the journey of a river. But starting at basics, we're going to have a look at the water cycle today. Now, a few of you might have done the water cycle at primary school. You might have done it in science already. OK, so this might be um, kind of recapping on information you already know for you. Some of you may have never come across this at all. So um, I will just be going through the water cycle in detail. And um, if you do already know some, it's just a bit of um, recap for you anyway. So first thing I want you to do is this picture that we've got here in the middle what i want you to do is um caption it for me okay so give it like a like a caption as if you were uploading it to like instagram or something give it like a short little caption on what you would say about that picture okay that's your first task okay so pause me here um and just write down a quick caption and then press play again okay so once you've done that we're moving on to task one. OK, so um, matching geographical words to the definitions. So you might have seen some of these words before. We've got precipitation, condensation, evaporation, groundwater flow, surface runoff and transpiration. Um, if you haven't seen them before, do not worry. Um, I will not judge you at all if you use Google for some of them um, because there will be new words to some of you, but some of you might know them. OK, so match those up to the definitions on this side here as best as you can. Um, and uh, pause me here while you do that. As I said, if you want to use Google, no issue. <laughs> OK, but try to do it without it first um, and see how you get on. And then for the ones you're stuck on, you can use Google or if you're stuck on all of them, use Google. OK, pause me here and um, start task one for me. OK, must press play again. So moving on to the next slide. Um, just looking at what we are looking at today. So we are going to have a look at defining some key terms associated with the water cycle, which is what we've just done. We're going to apply those keywords to describing the process of the water cycle. So having a look at how we can use those words that we just looked at in describing the process of the water cycle. And then we're going to have um, a look at our understanding of the processes of the water cycle and trying to apply that in like a story format. So we're going to try and tell the story of the water cycle or how water travels through the water cycle. OK. OK, so just going through um, the answers to task one um, so you can tick them off um, yourself if you want to or um, just check that you've got them right. So precipitation OK, is rain, hail, sleet and snow that falls from clouds. Um, so you get different things that fall from clouds. We see a lot of rain in this country. In other countries, you might get a lot more snow in colder countries and then you see things like hail and sleet, which would see more often in the winter as well. Um, condensation is when water vapour cools and turns into clouds. OK, so condensation is when any gas turns into a liquid. OK, um, so it's cooling down, it turns into um, a liquid. So in the case of the water cycle, it's water vapour that's been evaporated, turning into clouds. Evaporation is when the sun heats up water from the sea and it goes into the air and uh, also can be from um, any other body of water. If you get evaporation, it's evaporating up into the air. So evaporation is liquid turning into a gas, whereas condensation is gas turning into a liquid. 
Okay, groundwater flow is when water flows through the rocks and soil underground. Okay, so it's water that, that flows underground essentially. Uh, surface runoff is when water runs off the surface of the ground, pretty self explanatory. Um, and transpiration is when the sun heats up water um, from leaves of trees. Okay, so transpiration is essentially when if the sun is hitting a tree or a plant and there is water stored in that tree or plant, then the water gets evaporated directly from the plant. That's called transpiration. OK, so just check you got those definitions right um, for task one and we can move on to the next slide. So um, just some information to go through looking at evaporation and condensation. So evaporation is when liquid water um, turns into water vapour gas without boiling. OK, so um, it's just the change from from liquid to gas. Um, this happens when you leave wet clothes out to dry. So when you hang out your washing and your washing is wet, what happens is the sun um, evaporates any of the moisture from your clothes and it dries them off so all that water that's on your clothes turns into water vapor goes up into the atmosphere and your clothes are dry okay condensation is when water vapor um, gas cools down and turns into liquid water so if you look at this picture here when you get like uh, steamy windows or the, the steamy mirror when you've had a shower is when that um, gas is turning and it turns into liquid so if you've got steam coming from your shower and it cools down on your mirror it will turn into liquid and that's what your mirror will look like so that's condensation okay so hopefully that's okay if you don't understand any of it it might be worth um, having a look on google see if there's any videos you can find that will help you understand it or you can email me and i'll try and explain it a little bit better next bit is just a little bit more information okay so just looking at the water cycle so as i said some of you may have seen this kind of diagram before and um, the cycle of how water travels around um the atmosphere so water never stops moving okay snow and rain fall on the earth in um to the earth from clouds and the rain um, and melted snow run downhill into rivers and lakes and sometimes crashing over waterfalls eventually the water flows into the ocean the water in the oceans rivers and lakes evaporates into the sky where it forms clouds through the process of condensation then the cycle begins all over again okay so that's the water cycle so it starts um with evaporation We've got the sun beaten down onto things like um, the sea and lakes and rivers, and that water then evaporates. When it gets into the air, um, it, when it rises up, it starts to cool down, because when things rise up in the atmosphere, they do cool down. So then it starts to cool down and forms clouds, so that water vapour turns into clouds. Then when those clouds get quite full, quite heavy, um, the precipitation starts to fall from them. So rain, snow, sleet, hail starts to fall from those clouds. It then falls back onto the earth, onto mountains or um, onto the, um, just land, into rivers, um, back into lakes, things like that. Um, and then it flows back into the sea or rivers or lakes and back eventually to the sea. OK, and then the cycle repeats. So that's how water flows around. Um, transpiration, again, is when the sun heats up plants and um, any moisture that's in those plants or trees can also be evaporated out um, in the form of transpiration. OK, so that's a different one there. I'm not going to try and rub out all those scribbles because it's very messy or maybe I will but yeah be fun okay so again as I said if, if any of that isn't too clear what I'll do is leave some links in the description box of the YouTube video um, to some good videos on um, the water cycle that might explain it a little bit better might give you a visual visual for how to look at it a little bit um, better it might help you understand so I'll leave those in the description below okay Right, so task three is a quick fire question. I just want you to answer this quickly um, on your uh, documents or your PowerPoints or your sheets or whatever you're doing your work on. <clears throat> so in no more than three sentences, what is the water cycle? What happens in the water cycle? Try and explain it for me in three sentences. OK, so pause me here and try and do task three. OK, moving on. Um, task four. So complete the tasks below on the water cycle and fill in the gaps using the work, uh, word banks. So um, I will attach this sheet to ePraise and Teams and you can print it off if you want to or you can download it and do it on the Word document. OK, so you can do it that way. Or if you want to, if it's easier for you and you want to save on printing, which is more than fine with me because I know not everyone will have access to a printer or a scanner or anything like that, you can just draw this out and write this out. That's fine by me. So that's why I've put it on the slide. Um, um, so draw this diagram out again you don't have to be an artist I'll, I'm sure I'll figure out what you've drawn if you're not the best at art that's fine um, but just make sure you fill in these labels here using these words here and the gaps down here using these words here okay so um, 
just have a look at the diagram, see where those words might fit in. Okay, so for example, if we look at condensation, so this is a diagram of the water cycle. Where are we thinking condensation is happening? Okay, would it be over here where the sun is on the water? Would it be over here where the clouds are forming? Where might it fit in? Okay, so which box would it fit in? Where might it fit in? And then have a look at the ones down here and see where they were, where they'd fit in. So read through the passage first I would suggest so you can see kind of how it flows what words might fit where and then think about where you can put it in okay so as I said um, you can either use the word document that I've attached on ePraise and Teams um, and edit it and send it to me or upload it um, or you can just draw it out or find a diagram on Google or something okay it doesn't have to be this exact one it can be um, the one I've uploaded or or one you find yourself or draw yourself that's fine by me okay but all your words are there and I'll, I'll leave that on this slide for you to use while you're doing this task okay so pause me here and um start task four okay um hopefully that wasn't too hard uh, moving on task five okay and um, we'll come to the end of the lesson now so explain a raindrops journey from sea to air and the land around the water cycle okay so essentially what I want you to do is explain to me um, a raindrops journey from sea to air and then back to land just a journey around the water cycle try and use as many of these key terms as you can okay so you can write it as if you are the, the raindrop that's fine by me so um, you could say I am evaporated by the sun up into the atmosphere i am then condensed as i cool down into clouds things like that you can write it in like a first person account as if you are the raindrop that's fine or if you want to do it like a raindrop is evaporated or a raindrop is condensed or anything like that that's fine as well okay so write it in whatever tense you want to or if you are the raindrop if you're not the raindrop that's fine and um, but yeah as i said try and just use as many of these key terms as you can okay i'll leave them up there as I said, you can use Google, you can use um, any of the extra videos I've put on the water cycle below and any of those just um, write an account for me of your journey around the water cycle. OK, so pause me here and task five. OK, moving on, I think this is the last task. I think yeah last task so um, task six a bit of thinking to yourself okay there's no right or wrong answer here I just want you to think about um, this question for me because it leads in um, to what we'll be doing in the next few weeks so how can precipitation so rain snow sleet and hail affect human activity okay think back specifically to what we were doing on India and some of the things we were doing on India to do with heavy rainfall any any bells ring in there think about how it can affect human activity how it can affect humans so if we get um maybe a period of heavy snow or heavy rain or not enough rain not enough snow anything like that how can that affect us as humans and what we do in our daily lives or what some people might do for jobs or or things like that okay so write a few sentences or a sentence or two on what you think um in particular okay and i'll be interested to see or hear on what people have written Okay, so as soon as you've done that, make sure you save your Word documents, save your PowerPoints or um, file your sheets away um, safely for when we go back to school. Um, and then make sure you submit them on Teams, submit them on ePraise, email them to me or send a picture to me or keep them safe. Okay, um, and then please make sure you also do the quiz. Um, quiz numbers are going up for people who have done them, but please make sure those numbers are keep going up because it gives me an idea of how you're actually getting on and how you're understanding the work I'm setting. And it really helps me to give me a good idea. OK, so please make sure we do the quiz as well. But for now, that is all from me. OK, um, have a lovely week, everyone, and I will speak to you next week.